But isn't it un-American un and wrong to discriminate against people based on their religion? But Jimmy, the problem, uh, I mean, look, I'm for it, but look, we have people coming into our country that are looking to do tremendous harm. You look at the two, look at Paris, look at what happened in Paris. I mean, these people, they did not come from Sweden, okay? Look at what happened in Paris. Look at what happened last week in California with, with you know, 14 people dead, other people going to die, they're so badly injured. I mean, we have a real problem. There's a tremendous hatred out there. And what I want to do is find out what, it, you know, you can't solve a problem until you find out what's the root cause. And I want to find out what is the problem, what's going on. And it's temporary. I've had so many people call me and say thank you. Now, if you remember, when I did that a week ago, it was like bedlam. All of a sudden, and you watch last night, and you see people talking, they're saying, well, Trump has a point. We have to get down to the problem. The people that are friends of mine that called, they said, Donald, you've done us a tremendous service because we do have a problem and we have to find out. Those may have been crank the... calls. Those may no, have been no, crank no. calls. <laughs> One of the things I find fascinating about Donald Trump is the way he uses language differently than other candidates for political office, especially President of the United States. Whereas his opponents and the political class in general seem hyper aware that their words will be picked apart and used against them, Trump willfully disregards this fact. As a lifelong salesman, he has a huckster's knack for selling a feeling, even if the ideas and facts that underscore it are spurious, racist, or just plain incomprehensible. So I thought it would be illuminating to look at a Trump answer to a simple question. In this case, Jimmy Kimmel asking Trump whether or not it's wrong to discriminate against people based on their religion, referring to Trump's proposal to temporarily ban all Muslims from entering the United States. This 220 word, exactly one minute answer displays, I think, a range of the things that Trump uses all the time in his speech. The first thing to note is how simple this language is. Of the 220 words, 172, or 78%, are only one syllable, and often they come in a rhythmic series like a volley of jabs ending with one of his buzzwords. We have to get down to the problem. 39 words, or 17%, are two syllables long. Only four words have three syllables, three of which are the word tremendous, tremendous, tremendous. And just two words are four syllables long. California, which he's forced to use because it has less syllables than San Bernardino, and temporary, which he swallows. And it's temporary. I've had so many people. This breakdown fits with the study done by the Boston Globe that put all 2016 presidential candidates' announcement speeches through the Flesh Kincaid readability test to determine their respective grade level rankings. Donald Trump's speech came out at a fourth grade reading level. Now, for reference, Ben Carson came out at sixth grade. Hillary Clinton and Jeb Bush were speaking at an eighth grade reading level. And Bernie Sanders was way up in high school, a sophomore to be exact. Now, this isn't only down to word or syllable choice. It's about sentence construction, too. Trump favors simple sentences like, I mean, we have a real problem. There's a tremendous hatred out there. Rarely does he use complex sentences or independent clauses. He also favors the second person a lot of the time, addressing listeners directly with commands. Look at Paris. Look at what happened in Paris. Look at what happened in Paris. Look at what happened last week in California. Or implicating us in what he's saying as if we've already agreed. And you watch last night and you see people talking. He's really good at this, at framing negative response as an overreaction that was subsequently realized as such. If you remember, when I did that a week ago, it was like bedlam. All of a sudden, and you watch last night, and you see people talking, they're saying, well, Trump has a point. We have to get down to the problem. Maybe the most important technique Trump utilizes, and he does this more than anyone I've ever heard, is ending his sentences with strong, punchy words. A lot of times, he'll rearrange the beginning of a sentence awkwardly so that he can end strong. For example, here, it would probably be more natural to say, you can't solve a problem until you find out what the root cause is. But he brings the is forward to end on root cause. He does the same here. And it looks like that's what he was about to do at the end before Kimmel cuts him off. These final words are crucial for Trump. They're pointed and taken together sketch the theme of the entire answer. Arm, dead, die, badly injured, problem, root cause, thank you, bedlam, point, problem, service, problem. In some sense, it's these words that audiences remember, especially when the rest of his speech is incoherent. 
Like the best salesman, Trump keeps it simple. He repeats a lot. We have a real problem. What is the problem? We do have a problem. We have to get down to the problem. And he uses his favorite words over and over. Tremendous, tremendous, tremendous service. And he always seems to have friends who are part of the group that he's currently insulting, calling him up and thanking him for the privilege. Many of them called me and they said, you know, Donald, you're right. We have a problem. I mean, look, there is a problem. Donald Trump knows when to sound incredulous or forceful. He has good comedic instinct. You could even call him witty. But you can't call him smart or well-informed. The best salesman could sell you a TV without knowing anything about it. Because the TV isn't what matters. What matters is you. And if you are an American citizen who, for years, has listened to politicians sound sophisticated while accomplishing nothing, you might just be primed for something that is everything they are not. But the next time you feel like Donald Trump has a point, do yourself a favor and look at his words. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I wanna point you in the direction of my friends over at Wisecrack who do some awesome work, some awesome video essays. Um, if you like my stuff, you're definitely gonna like what they do. They talk about books, movies, and my personal favorite is definitely 8-bit philosophy, which is like philosophy explained with Nintendo graphics. So well done, I wish I had thought of that. Um, anyway, go over there, click there, subscribe, watch a video. If you guys wanna help me out, as always, you can click right here, pledge a dollar or $3 or $5 to my channel, help me start 2016 right. We're gonna do some awesome stuff in the next year. I can't wait to see you guys next Wednesday for the next video, and I will see you, well, I just said I'm gonna see you next Wednesday, so, so bye.